Hello, and welcome to this episode of Speaking Out. My name is Tristan Lacey. Now, first, I want to thank everyone who helped me out with this project. People like Professor Kwong, who was a mentor, and all the different people that I've interviewed and asked for different ideas as far as content, different things like that. I want to thank you. Now, as you can obviously see, we're not going to be in the studio today. That's because we're going out on campus to speak to black African-American women on colorism. Now, colorism is an issue that spans all different races and demographics, but I've noticed that it affects black African-American women. So I want to speak to the students here on our campus on how they face colorism, have they faced colorism, and different experiences and things like that. So let's head out. You know, we speak on colorism as far as light skin, dark skin, as far as in the black community. Now, with that, do you ever find issues, like you say, like we were children? Because I know for me, my personal standpoint, when I went to school, especially elementary school, you know, being light skin, we never said we were light skin. It was always, we're mixed. Mm -hmm. That was the thing for us. We always said, oh, yeah, we're mixed. We're mixed. And we never knew what that meant. Yeah. Especially me. I never knew what mixed was until I got to, like, middle school, I think. And I mean, like, higher end, about to go into high school type. So was that a common thing for you all as well? I think it was hard for me to say I was mixed because mm -hmm. I was a darker skinned uh, female or person in general. Mm -hmm. People didn't believe that, like, oh, child, you're black. That's it. You know, <laughs> that's, right. that's it. But no, I mean, I'm a lot more <laughs> Latin than most think. I'm a lot more indigenous than most think. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that was more of the thing. I was never really able to say, oh, I am mixed. But my sister could say it. Mm hmm. So when you found yourself, it's almost like defending mm -hmm. yourself as far as saying, yes, you're mixed. What were some of the common words that were maybe been exchanged when you saying, yes, I'm actually mixed with Latino, Latino, I come from a Latin heritage. Mm -hmm. um, that it was a lie or the only thing you could be was Mexican. Um, or maybe Puerto Rican, like on the far dark <laughs> where they could identify yeah. darker skin yeah because you know darker skin latinos are puerto rican mexican and uh panamanian, panamanian and cuban mm -hmm. or dominican and so that was that was it like if you didn't say my family is literally from spain <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh someone that you want to be with in a relationship do you find colorism kind of takes its stance in there as well or with me or like with other people well, from what we see in society, <laughs> what we see on social media, different things like that. Um, I you definitely see it. Um, I kind of feel like this whole thing with like you know with dark skin, it's kind of you know people are kind of becoming a lot more socially acceptable of it. But at times, I wonder like, is this just the trend? Is this the thing that's just in now? Do y'all really think that this you know? But other than that, then, you know, I feel like it is. It's definitely still a problem. We still have a problem. Um, a lot of dudes, uh, men, aren't uh, accepting of dark-skinned women. I mean, it's mostly black men. Um, you hear, you see a lot of that on Twitter. You know, I wouldn't date a black, a dark-skinned girl. Um, and that's, I know that that could really hurt, you know, someone that they see, you know, you don't want to date me because of my skin my skin's darker you know I could be a really great girl but you don't date me because my skin darker and a lot of times on Twitter as well you see you know dark skin appreciation posts because I think I, my older sister is really dark skin and my mom grew up teaching her like you are beautiful like you know and all that and I used to want to be like dark skin like chocolate like her because I was like she getting all this you know attention <laughs> but I, I didn't know that my mom had to really get prepare her for the world because a lot of people were going to tell her like your skin they don't think her skin was pretty or you know you dark you you blacker than everybody so um i just think that a, a lot of people that plays a role in people's dating preferences um but then there are people who appreciate dark skin as well so as women uh, so as black women do you find it hard trying to defend your skin tone or defend basically how your skin tone is in relation to like members of your family. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of times people 
who grew up with uh, mixed families or like somewhere down the line, grandparent was maybe a lighter shade than their actual parent. So then it comes back around and mm-hmm. skipped a, de- a generation. So he's like taking family pictures. One person looks lighter than the other and different things like that. Have you ever had that issue come up? Yes. <laughs> Oh, um, so my sister again, she was she's like the darkest out of all of us. And so when we do take pictures, you know, everybody's like, Who is that? you know. And I've because I've grown up seeing my you know, my mama, you you are beautiful. Anytime anybody says anything about a dark skinned woman in general, I let them know I have to get them straight because it's not okay. And I think I think that is just the prettiest skin, like it's always smooth and everything. So, um definitely I'm I'm there. If anybody's saying anything about dark skinned women, I'm the first to snap that. <laughs> and like with family, no, I've never really had that and issue. Um, I mean, my two youngest siblings, they're five and three. They are mixed. Their mother is white. Um, you know, I find myself having to teach them things. Like, I'm actually scared because I asked them one day, hey, what color are you? And they said white. And it scared me because I was like, they may think that because their mom is white, but at the end of the day, the world is not going to see them as white. The world is going to see them as black because that's what they are, essentially. But it's it's sad that, you know, as kids, you know, it's harmless to them. Like, they don't realize what they're saying, you know, but it's like, you have to prepare these kids for what's really going to come. Like, my brother, he's, he's, a, brown, he's a brown little boy, and... You know, it could be him and a police officer one day. And, you know, his mom hasn't prepared him for that. So it's like, it's scary. So to have to defend yourself, you have to defend your brothers, you have to defend your sister, you have to defend your kids, you got to defend all these people. I just feel like it shouldn't be that way. There's no reason why I should be categorized as an angry black woman Mm -hmm. because of the color of my skin. But someone who's lighter than me, they can say the exact same thing. And, oh, it's cute because she's, they find that cute. But when I say it, it seems intimidating, you know? And a lot of times with mixed people, um, it's kind of like some, you know, they don't know what side am I on. Because my Mm -hmm. brother was dating, I guess, a mixed girl. And they had gotten to it. And she said, you black bitch. Like, just sorry, I don't know how to say that. (laughs) But she just, like, you know, went off. And I'm like that's half of you what you yeah. what you mean like you know so a lot of times with that like i think that they have a lot of trouble too like you know where do they where are they you know so. the first time that i ever experienced colorism um i was like at the store with my mom buying barbie dolls and she was trying to get me to choose a black barbie doll and my issue with it was that Um, I thought the doll was supposed to look like me so I didn't want one because I played with white Barbie dolls because I look like them (laughs) and she was like well that's not what you are and we cutting that out right now (laughs) and like she literally told people stop buying her white Barbie dolls she's not white she's black now with colorism it's funny y'all bring up you know preference as far as dating and things like that do you find yourselves as women falling into the stigma of colorism? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think that is? Because, like, for me, it's not necessarily, like, colorism. That's just what I'm attracted to. You know, if I like you, I'm not going to say, no, I'm not going to date you because you're this color. If I like you, but typically, I'm attracted to one more than the other. That's the same for me, but I know some of my friends be like, they don't like light skins because they're like weenies, you know, like they some babies. So they prefer some dark skinned guys because dark skinned guys are like more like masculine, yeah. Okay. Or the stereotypical. Allegedly. Okay. Now, do you feel like colorism holds us back as a society? Definitely. Yeah. Do you see any issues that happen with colorism on our campus? Yes. Um, I mean, just blatantly, like, when you see who people date and who people go for, I mean, it's no secret. <laughs> you know, it's no secret. Like, they pe- they want to go for the people with the lighter skin. Um, curly hair. Curly hair. Um, you know, shockingly, you know, on this campus, actually, no, not shockingly, it's wonderful. 
a lot of females on this campus embrace black females on this campus embrace their hair um i when i was in high school i did not see that a lot um i actually just chopped my hair chopped the perm off of my hair and you know i'm learning to embrace it that's the first time i've ever seen my natural hair this is the first time ever i've seen my natural hair so it's definitely on this campus but i think as black people on this campus we're learning to open doors for having these conversations with people and to express ourselves to let people realize like we're all the same so um i think i went to a predominantly white high school so um a lot of the dudes um white dudes um, why do i keep saying dudes sorry <laughs> a lot of the white boys <laughs> would you know tell me i would date you like you you pass for white like as i'm saying like their parents would be okay with me you know they can bring the dark skinned girl home and i just felt so offended like you're real pretty for a black girl too that like as if in black girls aren't already pretty you know right. and so um here it, especially like she said with the dating preferences who they choose to date um a lot of times you see a, a lot of the um, boys here putting down darker skinned girls it's not really the uplift um but it's not as bad as i i know it's not as bad as you know other universities because mm-hmm. um, i've heard stories from my friends so it's kind of segue away from it uh as far as colorism on social media a lot of times like we can go back to the whole relationships and what people are attracted to and things like that but do you find yourselves having issues with people who attend HBCUs versus oh you all attending a PWI? Yes. Why do you think that is? You, it's like, like on Twitter, like, like you can't be black. You don't, you don't understand what it's like to be black if you don't go to HBCU. Yeah. Um, Why do I've you been think black my whole life, so I mean, I feel like just because we don't get the culture that you guys get at your HBCU doesn't mean that we aren't fully yeah. black. So you don't know what my parents are teaching me or like what I went, you know, because we have the same history. It's just yours goes more in depth. And then on the PWI side, people will say like, well, I've heard that HBCUs, their curriculum is easy or um, they don't really, you know, like it's like a high school or they don't understand what it's like to be surrounded by people who don't look like you, things like that, especially like, a lot of times we see African American men and women who are proud of their HBCU, which I'm it's all beautiful. for. <laughs> but then there's a fine line where there are people who say that them getting their degree from an HBCU is somehow better than someone who's African American getting their degree masters or what have you from a PWI what is so funny is that they think that but it's only coming from from them Mm -hmm. because (laughs) when I looked into going to law school um, and I was having a discussion with my family who is about you know upper middle class black family or whatever and I was telling them you know I really want to go to Howard that's the law school that I want to go to I didn't get my chance to go to Howard for undergrad I got the grades now I can go to Howard and they were like, um, you know, have you talked to other lawyers and whatnot who are practicing and, you know, know more about law school? So I did. I started asking around. And a lot of the feedback that I was getting was that I shouldn't get my law degree from an HBCU because um, it's just not as well received mm-hmm. in the law sector. Like, I should just, I, I could go to any of the school, but they'll know that, like, because it's being taught differently and I know what the curriculum looks like which is the reason why I want to go to Howard Law School but it won't come out whenever I'm trying to get a job unless I'm working with black judges or lawyers or for a black firm a predominantly Mm -hmm. black firm Um, so I don't know what makes them think theirs is so better and it's not to say that it's it's bad I can celebrate you know an HBCU but um, I was just trying to go to school for the new (laughs) <laughs> I just wanted my degree. Right. <laughs> That's it. Yes. I only was thinking about the degree. <laughs> so we can all agree that that was one of the main reasons we came that to MSU, right? That was my main reason. I know that was <laughs> my main reason for coming to MSU. Yeah. Tuition, we, student we fees. We don't have to pay, you know, an arm and a leg for tuition. 
transition. Like, it's, it's I, not I feel like necessary. Because, <laughs> I mean, we, how many times do you hear older people talk about, man, college used to be so much cheaper now. Like, I feel like now it's getting to a point now where you're paying for a name. Yes. Mm-hmm. You go USC, mm-hmm. Howard. No, a perfect example Harvard. is like my younger brother. Um, his number two school was Howard, and his number one was George Washington. And so my family, most of us, was like, Howard, you got in, you go going to Howard. <laughs> but he really wanted to go to GW. And when we, of course, looked at the, the price ranges, of course, they're both really expensive. GW is insane. But um, he was upset, and so was my dad, about the lack of um, scholarships that he was receiving from Howard. And he was like, yeah, we want him to go to this HBCU, but if they ain't trying to help us pay for that, then we yeah, on to the next. Like, my dad was like, if y'all not trying to help us get in, then what's our purpose of even going? Cause <laughs> and that's another thing I could say that PWIs, you, you more, I feel like me, you're more likely to get scholarship money mm-hmm. out of a PWI. And because they, like, celebrate us. <laughs> so you're a high-achieving black person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, woohoo. We're we going to put you in all the leadership something. positions. <laughs> and it, I, I just don't like the, I pay less to go here. Now, I can't say that, oh, I think when I was a sophomore, I was going to transfer. We both were. <laughs> <laughs> we both were. I was going to transfer to PV. Um, only because their program, music program, is different mm-hmm. than here. And the only reason why I couldn't is because nothing transfers out of fame. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, and that was my issue as well, actually. Nothing, um, yeah. I just didn't want to go through the hassle of starting transferring, over. right? And then, yeah, literally starting over because I wanted to go to Texas State. Mm-hmm. And I was I just like, you know what? I think I just might be in the right place, y'all. <laughs> so in comparisons to PWIs and HBCUs, do you feel like colorism is more of an issue when it comes to PWIs, or do you think it would be something that's more apparent on an HBCU campus? I think because I think it would be more HBCU, and I, I only say this because when I was looking up the whole colorism, like from the root of the problem, um, I read that it was like you know Jim Crow laws wanted um, blacks to argue within themselves. If they could think that oh I'm better better than you because you know I'm lighter you know then that could probably start something between them two and that's what we I mean a lot of people have been we've been doing this back and forth for years like like mm-hmm. if you're lighter you know you you think you better so I think that at HBCUs it's probably more of a problem just because it's going to be more black people and you're going to have you I mean you have more time to interact here at a PWI I feel like it's more so that I'm fighting against you know the whites here it's not really i have a problem with the black people here because if you see a black person you know you automatically man wait i ain't seen you before you know i want to get to know you you know i want to know all the black people at my pwi because you know it's rare it is so i think that it would be more of a problem at hbcu just because you know black people get together it got really good or really bad bad. so now today we focused on colorism with emphasis on black women but colorism is an issue that stains our whole community. It stains the black community within itself, but it also spans outward to Latinos, European countries, Asian countries, and each four corners of the globe. So think about that the next time you use certain words, terminologies, and different things like that when identifying someone with the color of their skin. Now also remember that you can follow me at T-R-E-T-H-E-M-U-S-C-I-A-N for more content and updates on my next episode. For speaking out, I'm Tristan Lacey.